Hello there, naughty steppers. A new month, a new haircut, and all sorts of other newness is abounding. But that won't stop me from dipping into the relative old for a short while. Because it's time for the second instalment of the Extra Naughties series, where I look over EPs and albums over the past month that I didn't get to review in full. That month being February 2018, which included EPs from the likes of Spag Hedy and Rel the Soundbender, as well as the debut album from Lax, all of which were reviewed on this channel. But there was also a metric fuckton of stuff that I didn't get time to cover in full, so I will be talking about them in this video. Bear in mind once again that because of the volume of content being covered here, the reviews aren't as in-depth and extensive as the full-length ones. I narrow each one down to a few points and I throw in some suggestions here and there so that you can see whether checking them out will be worth your time. Furthermore, anything released on the 26th of February and after will not be covered in this volume but the next one. And lastly, these will be discussed in alphabetical order by way of artist. So here we go! And first off we have the new EP from Apache and I somehow expected something a little faster paced than this, he goes full pelt with this grand, choir-influenced trap theme. One that never truly takes off for me. It's nice to see someone adhere to such a particular type of music across an EP. But for me, it's a distant cry from his quicker tempo stuff, tracks like Fire Inside, Skeleton Dance and Confess, that really verge on the epic, with a great blend of different sounds, an amazing energy, and just moody in the best way possible. And this EP won't stop me from loving that stuff. It's actually great to see that he can tap into these different styles of music. This just isn't what I was expecting, and certainly not what I've come to love him for. Now, no word of a lie, Atlians are one of my favourite artists in the dark electronic music scene. Their venomous, tribal trap style is one that I've loved for a number of years now. And so this was probably the EP on this list that I was most looking forward to hearing. However, I don't feel like it quite lives up to the standards of tracks like Chief and Interlock. The vocal chopping and plump, rounded percussive approaches are still there, but these tracks just don't quite hit me in the same way as past songs of theirs have. They settle here for synth patterns that are a little bit simpler, and as a result their music doesn't seem as daring or playful with respect to their past stuff. With Witch Doctor being undoubtedly the closest we get to their most renowned songs. A haunting, ritualistic track that isolates the vocal chopping at the drop and has those cheeky samples dropped in at various points. It's just a very, very solid tune. And even though I expected a little more from this EP, it doesn't stop me from loving their general approach to making music. It's certainly one of the most unique out there. This is beautiful, it's brilliant, it's compelling, but it is a long listen for something that is seven tracks long. That being said, if you have a spare 45 minutes to really immerse yourself in something and be taken on a journey, then this one is definitely for you. It's mostly drum and bass and neurofunk, so it has both its heavy moments and it's more low-key moments, but I really enjoyed this thing from start to finish. There's so much to take in as the listener, but it all coheres from beginning to end, and I would recommend to anyone who appreciates the drum and bass art for what it is, and how it's progressing over time. It's big and slim, bitch! I think there's potential in these ideas, but unfortunately the overriding feeling that I get with these tunes is that they're not quite fleshed out enough. The drops for the most part seem empty and without a true direction, more putting in notes wherever you can than having a real purpose to them. And there are many points where the percussion doesn't feel full enough to complement what lays over it. What I would say is that the vocals are the point where this EP consistently strikes a chord, but at the end of the day their drops are the focal point of this music, and they just don't quite hold up here in my opinion. Having said all of this, I was a fan of some of their stuff in the lead up to this, so I'm interested to see how their sound develops in the future. Put simply, if you enjoy stuff from the Barong family record label usually, then I think you will enjoy this one from Crisis Era. It adheres to their Jungle Terror hardstyle vibe with a couple of nice jumpy tracks, particularly the second and fourth, the latter of which being a given considering Mike Savello was involved. But the rest is a little wide of the mark for me and doesn't quite leave an impression bereft of the feeling and character to take it to the next level. But as I said, if you like Barong stuff usually, then you will most likely enjoy this. Now Gent and Jorns are a duo, well, well, uh, 
Are they still a duo or is it just one of them now? Anyway, I've been following them or him ever since I heard the trap belter turn up way back in around 2014. And whilst I haven't heard much since that I've fallen in love with in the same way, their legendary status in the trap scene makes anything that they put out imperative listening. And this EP retains that large but intricate approach to trap production, with extensive introductions to tell stories and set scenes within all of these tracks individually. It is clear here, however, that they have gone down a more mellow path, with a future bass slant as opposed to the more bombastic sounds that I came to know them for originally. The tracks Champion Sound and Collector integrate filthier sounds into this light backdrop, but overall I would say it's more for people who prefer Future Bass, as its release on Monster Cat would suggest. Now with these EPs, I mean the clue is very much in the name, Death to Genres, and once again GTA cover a lot of different styles across four tracks. From classic clubhouse to twangy bass house, to animated trap and then to more aggressive bass house sounds, and featuring the likes of Dylan Francis, Bauer and Damien Endrix. And EPs like this are great because they amass so many wildly varying sounds and styles, bringing together artists that you just wouldn't expect to collaborate. Creating some pretty wild end products in the process, some of which could do with a little bit of refining in terms of the cohesion between their ideas. But to be honest, I come to the end of EPs like this thinking more that I am happy that this ambitious approach to making electronic music exists. Now this latest release from Jay Phelps I was really looking forward to because I have loved some of his stuff in the past. From his Mech Bounce EP to the track M3 and even his recent collaboration with Datsik. But whilst this project certainly hits hard, it doesn't quite strike me in the same powerful way that his past stuff has. Because for the most part with these tracks there's a bit of an imbalance between the bass elements and the synth usage. There's either good variation with the synths but what underpins them isn't quite impactful or beefy enough, or there is a bit more heaviness to his sound but the ideas don't quite possess that wow factor. The one track however where he gets it spot on is Watch Me. A brooding, invigorated trap step tune that perfectly brings together feathery fleeting sounds with a succession of truly meaty bass notes. And for the most part it's a continuation of his classically animated dubstep style, so if you are a fan of that then definitely give this one a good listen. Nextly this new Ken Code EP is very grungy, thumping mid-tempo music with eerie, alienating vocal samples. One of the most underrated EPs this year for me so far with regards to how much coverage it got in relation to how good it actually is. It has an overwhelming sway and weight to it that keeps the listener entranced, teetering on the hypnotic. In that sense I'd say it's also very mysterious, the insistency of its beats veiled by its darker overtones. Not only a nice interaction between sounds, but also a nice mix of tempos and moods across the four tracks. If you are fans of Rez, A Glory, Whipped Cream, Social Kid, then you must check this EP out. Do it! Do it! Now as soon as I realised this new Levitate EP was a thing, I jumped straight on it because the last project of his was one of my favourites of 2017. And whilst it's fair to say I didn't like this one as much on the surface, the brilliance of the last one made me look for more things to like with these tracks over the multiple listens. He retains that truly jarring, scything slow tempo sound, squeezing in every bleep and bloop wherever he can. And whilst it transitions well between the calm and the helter skelter, and there's a clear consistency to his aesthetic, it can be a little too visceral at points and I find myself preferring his more down-to-earth, controlled method of production. But his technique is an undeniably distinctive one, and I'm very excited to see where he goes with it next. Then we have the new Michael White EP, which really makes its presence felt with a load of large sounds, and a good variation both in styles and moods. But for the most part, the drops just don't seem well-rounded enough. The production quality and the sounds are there, but the ideas don't smack me in the face necessarily. I would say, however, that everything that surrounds the drops, the introductions, the build-ups, the midsections, are all very tight and well executed, and create atmospheres well for their respective tracks. But the overwhelming feeling for me is the distortion between these two aspects, so the songs are only good in part, and not as holes. Now there are some pretty large tracks here from NATO Feels, with booming percussion and wide-reaching, screeching synths laced throughout. The title track being a perfect example of this, with huge kicks, skittering piercing sounds and a plethora of well-placed hi-hats. It takes some interesting directions, 
through oozy dubstep and more gurgled forms of percussion in light of the clearer trap production that worked so well. But I come to the end of this thing happy with its variation and willingness to tap into various production techniques. I must admit I didn't warm to his stuff as much in the past, but I think this EP will make me more excited for what he comes out with in the future. Now this latest EP from Pogman takes a little while to grow into itself, with the first track lacking any real spice to it. But it picks up with the electric vocal from Gravity in Simon Sang, which turns out to be a lovely swerving track that still has that quite skeletal feel, but is a lot more varied in terms of its synth usage. And although the final track signals a return somewhat to the more bare bones style of production, I really like the third track Drop That for its unrelenting, brutal delivery. But this is just a pretty solid EP that plugs away and makes a statement through its consistency. As I said, there could be more juice to this thing, but I feel better appreciating it for what it is. I love the energy and force on show here from Riot 10. This EP hits hard in every track. I just don't like the ideas that much. They don't venture that far and are just quite simple to be honest. A little repetitive at points, meaning that it drones on a bit without throwing too many surprises at the listener. Having said that, I do really appreciate the mix of heavy metal and dubstep throughout. I love that it's a thing, and I'm all for anyone trying to push that genre forward. I can imagine also that these are the exact sorts of tunes that would be great to hear live, where the sheer volume of the sound just overrides everything else. And here's someone who is loved in the dark electronic music scene, and it's not hard to see why. He's a clearly larger than life person who loves what he's doing, so props to him for that. And lastly, shout out the Bad Clark remix on this EP. It is one of my favourites of the year so far. I cannot deny it. Also known as X-Core, Matt Cavender's emphasis of late has been on this new house project under the name Sunny Banks, and this is his first EP with that alias. If you like your house with a serious bounce to it, erring on the heavy side but not venturing too far into that territory, then this EP is definitely for you. There are undeniably points where I feel like he could have gone a bit further with his ideas, and I expected it to be a little heavier overall. But considering he wrote this thing from start to finish in around two weeks, I think it displays a real consistency overall. The tracks fit very well alongside each other. And I'm not sure whether this would be his intention, but his stuff would fit right in at the likes of Confession and Night Bass, to name but a couple of house labels really pushing the boundaries in that particular scene. Now this new Ten Graphs EP was definitely what I was expecting, five grisly, hellish tracks that target your very soul when listening to them. One of the more likeable EPs from the Death Step genre, not quite as incessant, and more intent on painting pictures within these tracks individually, but still as vacant and horrifying, especially with the vocal samples used here and there, most notably with the track Flesh Eaters. At points the songs are a bit too muffled and scratchy to be able to discern a lot of detail from them, detracting from the overall sound a little but I do wait in anticipation for part two of this LP to see how it progresses. For all lovers of drum and bass, this four track compilation from Meth Lab is an absolute must. Completely seizing from start to finish, a real demonstration of how good the genre can be considering it has fallen a little short in recent years. So much attention to detail, loads of energy, brimming with intensity and purpose. My favorite track probably being Loop Stepwalkers, reminiscent somewhat of Netsky and with a fantastic groove and drive to it throughout. But if you were ever in doubt of the brilliance of drum and bass as a style of music, then listen to this EP and it will revive your interest once more. For the most part, I can't say I'm a massive fan of this style that Yellow Claw have grown into over the past few years. They set the scene well with their introductions and their vocals are pretty much always on point. But these festival inspired drops are just so flimsy, underwhelming and lifeless. I, I, I don't know what else to say about them really. They do much better at the hardstyle stuff, as parts of the tracks with Valentino Khan and Stoltenhoff show, bringing more of a thrust and aggression to their overall sound. But I find the emptier stuff to be more of a staple with their sound, drawing from the better moments in this EP as a result. Very heavy, mind-numbing, stretched out music here from Zeke Beats. Extremely mechanical and industrial, full of punches and just really in your face. It swells and contracts, all the while possessing a real intricacy in its variation, creating moments of isolation very well. Fuzzy, spacey, outer-worldly music that's simply beyond the norm, especially in its synth usage. And its endurance is its selling point not particularly huge drops or big build-ups. It could have been a little more ambitious at points ideas-wise, 
but I like the sound generally and the fullness of his sound. And I wouldn't say it's dissimilar to something that an artist like G. Jones or Eprom would produce. And finally, we have the latest EP from 219 Boys, which is some very solid house music, vibrant and lively, yet always maintaining that very dark vibe. It just does the job that it's supposed to do very well. Night Bass and other house labels like Confession are very good at churning out these catchy, infectious releases that are hard to dislike. Honestly, it's rare that I come out of listening to EPs from this genre without liking them a fair bit. For me, the best energy emanates from music of this type. So long live house music, and especially that of a darker variety. And so that draws the February 2018 volume of Extra Naughties to a close. Thank you very much, as always, once again, for tuning in. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on some of these EPs. Which ones did you enjoy, and which others not so much, and why? Let's get some really good conversation going. Moreover, were there any EPs that I missed out in this video from the last month? Again, let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it about, and subscribe to the Naughty Step channel if you haven't already. And also get following across social media if you are yet to. All of which, including links to previous videos, in the description box down below. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys. So be sure, as always, to keep it naughty and stay safe. And onwards into March we go. See you in the next one, Naughty Steppers. Peace out.